Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and I had a subscriber ask a question, which I will flip in here. And he's saying, hey Jason, how come uh, I'm a natural guy and I go to gyms and I feel like I look better than a lot of the guys who own gear? In fact, I see a lot of guys who use gear who, quote, look like shit. What's going on with that? I thought drugs work magic. Let me put on my plus five, have the weapon smithing, do a little bit of crafting, and let's talk about this. All right, I'm going to be objective with my actual answer. I'm not going to be insulting with my actual answer, but before I get to the answer to this question, is there actually legitimate explanations for this? This is explainable. Uh, but I want to say to the person, the sort of terminology you're using makes you sound like a high school girl. Like no grown ass man, no mature man gives a fuck what another man's body looks like unless you're gay. And I mean, most bodybuilders out there in a club, pretty good chunk, not most, that's not fair. I'm going to tell you, that's not fair at all. A very big chunk of bodybuilders are in the closet and just haven't come to terms with it. So there's a lot of that terminology out there. But actually sitting around and saying another man's body looks like shit when probably 70% uh, of females out there think their body looks just fine. Uh, to say that it looks like shit, to make such an extreme statement sounds very catty and it's very much sounds like a half grown up schoolgirl. You sound like a high school teenage girl. Don't do that, bro. Uh, it doesn't come across very manly to other men. Other men are going to like think you, other men are going to think that you're gay if they hear you saying stuff like that. Just putting it out there. Uh, the bodybuilding world will give you a fucked up perspective. Now that aside, that aside, why does this happen? Uh, great question. Uh, simple answer. Drugs don't generally change your genetics. They don't change your genetics. They just simply bring out more of what is already there, all right? They bring out more of what's already there. If you're a guy who already has uh, a fairly thin physique, meaning you've got a, a fairly thin bone structure, fairly thin joints, a uh, narrow pelvis, but you have a little bit wide of shoulders, you know, just kind of a wide collarbone, and you start lifting weights and you have good low muscle insertions and things, you start lifting weights and you eat enough to gain muscle and you stay relatively lean, you are probably going to have, uh, as far as the classic aesthetic physique, you think of from like Greek statues and things, that's classic aesthetics. All right, I mean, we've known this for centuries. That's been considered to be classic aesthetics, like the, the Greek statues, right? Uh, people can understand that concept, the Greek statues, classic, classic aesthetics, classic physiques. You're going to look more like that than a guy with a completely opposite structure who goes on a bit of gear. You are always going to look more like that than he will. Because drugs don't change genetics. They only bring out more of what is already there. You started out with a far better genetic predisposition and structural predisposition to having the classic aesthetic physique than that other guy did. He is going to struggle and he may never be able to obtain that type of physique no matter how hard he works. He might, even if he gains more muscle uh, using drugs, even if he gets leaner, he still might look square, he might look blocky, he might look bottom heavy, he might have a wider hips, he might have narrower shoulders. He will not obtain that look no matter how many drugs that he runs. He might be bigger than you. He might gain 50 pounds of muscle on you, but he will not change his structure. All right. And that's what people need to understand is that a lot of the guys who have that classic aesthetic look have a certain genetic subtype as far as their bone structure, uh, different things about them. And when they go on a bit of drugs, particularly uh, the more aesthetic enhancing substances like Trembolone, Masteron, things like that, those people very, very quickly uh, develop the physiques that everyone out there wants who chases a physique. Uh, it's due to largely genetic gifts and then the drugs enhance those genetic gifts. They enhance what's already there. They can't change structure. You know what? And people have different bone structures and that's the thing. Aesthetics, as people think of them, are largely genetic. They are largely genetic. Is there a training component? Yes. Is there a diet component? Yes. But genetics play the largest role. That would basically be like saying, well, how come this guy who trains so hard and takes a bunch of D-Bowl still can't get a scholarship to a D1 football team? That's literally the same sort of question. Well, because he just didn't have the talents and gifts the genetic talents and gifts to make it on a D1 team. The best he did was maybe get a partial scholarship to a D3 team. 
You know, it's that simple, guys. There's an enormous, enormous genetic component to that. And, you know, if you are chasing aesthetics and that's what you care about and you happen to be that person, be happy that you were born with genetics uh, that help you with a goal that you wanted. Be happy about that. But that doesn't make the other person uh, inferior to you in any way. Maybe they have other talents in life that you don't have. You know what? That's just life, guys. That's just life. Now, uh, what is it that is the difference? Like, what is it that makes these guys aesthetic? Because we know drugs change certain things. Drugs help people reach goals and muscle mass and everything that they would never otherwise obtain. But what they do, on, the only thing these drugs do is add muscle to you. They might make muscles look a little fuller. Some will make muscles look fuller. Some will make them look a little denser. Some of them can help people lose body fat. Some of these uh, substances help people not gain as much body fat when they overeat so that they can focus more on gaining muscle without getting as fat. And they help put enormous amounts of muscle on people in a dose-dependent response. But what they can't do, they cannot change the structure of your bones. All right, they cannot change bone structure. They cannot change insertion points of muscles. All right, and those are two of the biggest factors for a, a how aesthetic a physique is in relation to like classic aesthetics and things like that. Those are the biggest factors is bone structure, uh, muscle insertion points. Now they can make muscles rounder and fuller, but if a person doesn't have the right structure, they're still not going to have that look. No amount of drugs will do that. It's the, the guys who you see in the gym who are very aesthetic, who use a bit of gear, all right? They were generally aesthetic before they started using the gear also. And what they usually are, the guys like Ziz. Ziz is a perfect example. Oh, my God. You talk about a class, classic example. All right. What do you guys remember about him before he started training? Look at what he looked like. He was a skinny World of Warcraft gaming nerd, right? Goes on a buttload of trend alone. I mean, he used a ton of trend. I mean, his doses that he was reporting and admitting were pretty high. Well, he goes on an enormous amount of, of, an, of a drug that is known for giving people a chiseled look because it helps you burn body fat easier even sometimes when bulking. Some guys can bulk on trend and lose body fat. It puts enormous amounts of quality muscle on people without putting any body fat on them. And it tends to make the muscle look full and sometimes even a little more striated because of the nature of the substance. But what did his structure look like before he started? He was skinny. He was a skinny under eater. Now, most gaming nerds, probably two-thirds of gaming nerds who sit around playing video games all day get fat because they have a high appetite. They get fat sitting around being sedentary. He was skinny. He was skinny. So what does that tell you about him? Low appetite. All right, you take someone who has a low appetite, they're going to stay a lot leaner when they go on drugs because a lot of these drugs make people hungry. They make people overeat. So sometimes people can use hefty amounts of drugs and end up being a bit less aesthetic for it because they gain fat. They weigh overeat. Yeah, sure, the drugs can blunt the fat gaining response, but some people, their appetite doubles on these substances. So they gain fat and muscle together in spite of the mild fat burning effect. Well, he had a, a low appetite. All right, a low appetite. He goes on a bunch of trend, goes and jumps in the gym, does a bunch of training, and within two years, within two years of being on all this trend, the guy has the classic, uh, which you would call the Apollyon type, uh, Greek statue type physique. I mean, he pulled it off inside of what, two years? But he was thin with small joints, right? Small joints, nice long muscle insertions. So, what ends up happening? The guy goes on some trend and all of a sudden he has what most people would consider who go into lifting, who want uh, improved physique. The guy has the, the textbook, textbook aesthetic physique, right? Textbook aesthetic physique. We pulled it off. But he had a narrow hips, so he had a narrow pelvis, that's bone. All right, guys, think of hips. They're always thinking, oh, that's fat. No, that's bone. That's your pelvis structure, that's bone. You can't change that shit. So guys who, who generally do the best are guys with lower appetites who have at least an average, if not wider, collarbone so that they V-taper better, low muscle insertion points, narrow hips, 
All right, those guys, when they, they start training, they usually have the underwear model look if they stay decently lean. And since they got a low appetite, it's not a problem. They end up training hard and burn through everything they eat. They gain weight slowly. All right, they have the underwear model look within a year, all right? Within a year, they already look better than a lot of guys on gear. Then they go on gear, then they look like this. And that's just what happens. Other guys, if you have a block year, type physique and you have a high appetite the drugs put muscle on you all right they put muscle on these guys they get thicker they get fuller but they get thicker and fuller everywhere and if they're already blocky they end up more blocky if they're already have a high appetite all these drugs make them hungrier uh, making them hungrier makes it harder for them to maintain a leaner physique on top of it all right uh, and that's just different bone structures. You know, it's different bone structures. Different people have different size hip structures. They have different widths of collarbones. Uh, people have different size joints. You know, and guys who have big joints, who have a big pelvis, they tend to make amazing strength athletes. They make amazing linebackers. In football, they make amazing rugby players. Uh, but no amount of drugs is going to make them look the way uh, all these physique oriented guys are, are going to want to look. It's just not going to happen because you can't change bone structure. All right. You can't change bone structure. You can't change muscle insertions. The only thing that these drugs do is enhance what's already there. And if you're already thick and blocky, guess what's going to happen? You're going to enhance your genetic traits. All right. You're, you're going to enhance your genetic traits. And then you combine that with uh, a lot of guys make a big classic mistake. Uh, tons of guys do. Everyone, it's, it's usually these skinny under eaters can't eat enough to gain muscle, right? Well, these guys go on drugs and they t find that they've got to eat everything they can find in order to gain muscle. They eat and eat and eat and they don't gain any fat. So they just look better and better. The, and they can eat pizza and burgers and everything and knock it down and um, they still look good. But by what people are calling look good here. And then they tell everyone else, no, man, you really got to eat that first cycle. Got to eat everything, everything you can get your hands on. Well, then the guys who have heftier appetites in them try that, who are already thick and blocky, they go on some gear and then they eat everything and they get fatter. They get fatter. They double their body fat. <laughs> Maybe not double, but they still might gain 10 pounds of body fat uh, running their gear. And, um, you know, it doesn't give them the desired response. So what people need to understand here, ultimately, that's the reason for it, guys. Your aesthetics are largely genetic. Uh, anyone can work with that, meaning you can have the wrong structure. And if you decide that's your goal for whatever reason, I'm not going to knock people for their goals. I'm not big on the aesthetic thing, but who am I to tell you what to do with your training time in the gym? If it makes you happy and it makes you fulfilled, then knock yourself out, man. At least you're in the gym. At least you're improving your fitness. But anybody can improve their aesthetic some. Uh, you can look at it and say, okay, well, I don't need muscle here. I guess I won't train this area very much because I'm thick and blocky there already. Uh, but my delts really need a lot of work. And you spend a ton of time hammering your delts and biceps and everything else. You can probably reshape that to some extent. But you're still going to be limited by your overall structure. And ultimately, uh, like this person noted, he looks better natural uh, than these guys who look like shit who are on gear but it, it's just drug, genetic structural differences the drugs can't change that you know drugs can't change that uh, so that just is what it is so hopefully that explains what this person is describing you see people talk about this all the time and they act like it's some amazing insult to tell another man that he looks like shit and what you need to remember, man, don't go doing that to other dudes because other dudes are going to turn and look at you. This is what guys are going to do to you in real life. When you're not on the Internet, you do this on the Internet. You don't you do this not on the Internet. You tell a guy who looks like shit and he turns and looks at you and you realize he's 30, 40 pounds heavier than you while looking like shit. And he's going to look at you and go, what are you, a fucking faggot? Why are you looking at my body? Why do you give a fuck? I'm not going to fuck you. I mean, that's that's going to be their response. And so the the physique related guys, I know you guys online, you kind of have that banter back and forth. But remember, the Internet's not the real world In the real world. You don't go tell other dudes who lift, particularly guys on gear, come up and tell them they look like shit. 
because they're going to look at you. Uh, actually, you better hope they're not really gay. <laughs> I don't know, because then they might want to fuck you anyways. But the, the whole point is, that's the internet, guys. That's not the real world. In the real world, that shit doesn't fly. And in the real world, the majority of guys, and even the majority of guys who go to the gym or work out, don't give a fuck what other men look like. Just saying. So it's not going to come across very well when you guys pull that. Uh, just remember, guys, in, in general, the internet is not the real world. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.